Testament book of Deuteronomy, chapter 34. Deuteronomy, chapter 34. Genesis, 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 chapter 34.
have been individuals who were determined. Determined to get where they were going. Determined to realize all that they had dared to envision and fancied to dream. President Reagan passed away a week ago, and we've been going through a week memorial services. And some people would say, well, I don't know why we have to over and over and over again look at this man's life and all that he's done and the example he's set and all of this. But really, there's an excellent opportunity in this for us as the people of God. Ronald Wilson Reagan one day became president of the United States of America, one of the greatest responsibilities and one of the greatest jobs that any human being can hold. But Ronald Reagan tried for the presidency a number of times long before he actually became president. He had been an actor, as we know. He had become governor of California for two terms, eight years. He was a radio personality for a number of years. He tried to run for the Republican nomination when uh, Gerald Ford had assumed the presidency after Richard Nixon had to resign from office because of Watergate. And he tried to wrestle the nomination away from Gerald Ford, but it wasn't the right time. Gerald Ford got the nomination and ran anyway, and of course he didn't win. Jimmy Carter won. And when Ronald Reagan finally was able to attain the nomination, it was not easy. It didn't just fall into his lap. He had to fight for it. But Ronald Reagan was a determined man. He was one determined individual. He knew what he felt like the course of America needed to be. And he knew that there weren't very many men on this planet that shared his specific vision and his specific ideas. And he said, the only way America is going to go down the path that I honestly, sincerely, truly, genuinely believe, whether we agree with him or we don't, it doesn't matter. It, that's what he felt is if I lead them down that path. And he was determined, and he went through a very difficult primary process, and he went through a very difficult, right down to the Republican National Convention. And finally, in the end, he was able to wrestle away from his opponent at that time being George Bush Sr., the nomination of the Republican Party, a man of 70 years old. And then, to win the office, Ronald Reagan had to be one determined individual. Because many people looked at him and said, he's too old to be president. We don't want an old man with old ideas. We want a new and vibrant young man with, with new ideas. We don't want some old man leading this country. And yet, as the months of the election passed, he was able, through determination, to show this country, uh, at least the majority of this country, that he deserves an opportunity to sit in the Oval Office and to lead our nation. Well, he did that for four years, and it wasn't easy. It was a tough road the whole way. We were coming out of a state of near depression. The economy was in such miserable condition the attitudes of the people of America were horrible. Crime was up. Everything that was negative was up, and everything that was positive was down. And Ronald Reagan was in office for four years. And although things had picked up considerably, certainly everything was not fixed. And then, of course, on top of this, during his first watch in the White House, we were visited with this plague that we call AIDS. And nobody knew what it was. Nobody understood where it was coming from. Nobody had any idea what was going on, how to respond to it, what to do. But he was one determined individual. And as time for re-election rolled around, 
Ronald Reagan, now 74 years old, got up in front of the country and said, Folks, I know everything's not perfect, but we're on our way. The only way we're going to get where we're going is if we determine in our minds that we're going to stay the course. And we're going to keep doing what we're doing. We're going to follow the direction that we're following. And if you'll just continue to put your confidence in me, I promise you that I'll continue to lead our nation down the path that we've begun to follow. And guess what? As difficult an election as that was for a 74-year-old man to win re-election, he won. What's your point today, Brother Mara? Is this a message about Ronald Reagan? No, I'm trying to use him as an example of what determination can do. Because if we're going to make it in this life, and if we're going to accomplish what we seek to accomplish today, we're going to have to be determined. We're going to have to be sold out to the cause that we're fighting for. We're going to have to be convinced beyond the shadow of a doubt that we will one day achieve what we are striving for, just like Ronald Reagan did. You see, all the obstacles that faced him one after another, first he couldn't win the nomination, then when he finally won the nomination, he was too old, then he said, to be elected president. But then, when he wrestled the nomination away from George Bush and was finally elected president, things didn't become perfect and grand. No, many obstacles faced him. Many difficulties they said, and yet he still was able to win the election. Why? Because there was one determined individual. Amen. The people of Israel were led out of the bondage of Egypt by a great man known to the world and known to all of Judaism as Moses. We read the story today of Moses reaching the end of his journey. He had led the people of God for 40 years through the wilderness, and suddenly he was looking out over the land that God had promised to them as a people. At this point, he was not allowed to go in, because in the process of leading God's people, he chose at one time to disobey God's voice and disobey God's direction and do things his own way out of anger and frustration. But in the process of this, there was a price to pay. And Moses, the Bible tells us, was allowed to see the promised land that he was not allowed to go in. So he died at Pisgah, outside of Canaan and was buried without ever having lived in the promised land, but merely having only seen it. But you know something, when you look at the life of Moses, and when you look at the experience of Moses and the example of Moses, just like Ronald Reagan, we see a man who was the Turk. We see a man who knew that if we'll just keep following God, if we'll just keep doing what the Lord's telling us to do, we will get where we're going. He didn't bring us this far to let us down. God didn't take us out of Egypt to let us serve in the wilderness. Folks, if you'll just follow me, we'll get where we're going. Moses was one determined individual. The people of God let him down time and time again in the wilderness, doing foolish and stupid and sinful and unbelieving things. And yet Moses fought for them. He fought for God to be merciful. He fought for God to be gracious to them, even when they deserved whatever it is they might get. Because he was one determined individual. He had his eye on the prize. And he was not going to stop, brother, till he got where he was going. And today there's a lesson to be learned from these examples of men who are determined. We've got to understand today, you and I will never get where we're going if we stop today. We'll never get where we're going if we quit running the race today. I don't care if you're trying to achieve something in your job. I don't care if you're trying to achieve something with your income. I don't care if you're trying to achieve a better quality of life. If you stop striving for it today, you'll never get there. you got to keep running. you got to keep pressing. you got to keep going. you got to keep believing. And in the end, you'll get where you're going. People look at this sanctuary this morning and how
how full it is, and they say, well, the moral, how do you keep going week after week, month after month, year after year? It's easy. I am one determined individual. Hallelujah. I believe that God's promises are true. I believe when God says it, he means it. I believe that the vision God has given me for this ministry and for this church will come into fruition. I don't know when, I don't know how, but I'll be there when it happens. Hallelujah. Men like Martin Luther King Jr., who took his cue from Moses himself, as he declared shortly before his untimely and brutal death, I have a dream. I have seen the promised land. And he even went so far as to prophetically utter the words, I may not make it there with you, but we as a people will enter that place. Even when an assassin's bullet ended, this man's marvelous and inspiring life of leadership, his infectious determination, carried those he left behind right to the bullseye toward which he had led them. And today, black children and white children play side by side in the streets of America. Jews and Christians worship in temples undisturbed and no longer threatened by the sounds of gunfire or threats of fire and bombs. Democrats and Republicans almost seamlessly transfer the helm of presidential and governmental authority for four years, and all men without regard to race, religion, color, or heritage peaceably coexist in a land of equal opportunity and mutual respect. Now I realize that we may not yet have fully realized the perfection of Martin Luther King Jr.'s dream. But I'm willing to bet today that if he were here, he'd rejoice to see the progress that we've made as he would join with us in the age-old chorus, although slightly revised, we have overcome, we have overcome, we have overcome today. That's the way we sing it as Martin were here today. No longer would the song be, we shall overcome, but the song would be, we have overcome, hallelujah. Because if you're determined, you'll take where you're going. Praise God, amen. Moses led the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt by the hand of God. Human and jam-packed with weaknesses and failings, Moses accomplished what he had set out to do. Not over the course of five or ten years, but rather over the course of forty. Difficult, tumultuous, and often disappointing years. He had already spent forty years preparing for this journey and divine mission before he ever even started to think about standing before Pharaoh and demanding with an authoritative, although halting, cry. Saith the Lord God of Israel, the great I am, let my people go. See, we get so upset sometimes because the goals we set and the things we want don't come to us in five years' time or in three years' time or in two years' time. But here Moses took him 40 years to get where he was going, but he kept going. But you want to know the funny thing? He prepared to do what he did for 40 years, for 40 years. Moses left Egypt having killed one of the slave masters, if you recall, defending the Jews. And Moses ran from Egypt in fear and was out living in the wilderness for 40 years. And God was preparing him for, what, for that mission that he would later be called to. So even though it took Moses 40 years to get where he was going, it took him 40 more years to prepare for that mission. We 
We may today be preparing for the mission, and we may not even yet have entered into the mission itself at all. Well, you think, oh, I know what I'm doing. I've got my life under control. I'm working toward this goal, and I'm going to accomplish this. And one day, I'll be the president of a bank, or one day, I'll be this, or one day, I'll be that. I've got news for you. God may be grooming you and preparing you for something that you don't know anything about, that you haven't even got a clue of. He may just be using your present circumstance as the proving ground and the preparation place to make you ready when the mission presents itself. And when the mission finally presents itself, you better be as determined <laughs> Listen to this now. You better be as determined that you're going to accomplish that mission as you are today determined that you're going to complete your training. Do you hear me now? If an astronaut brother isn't determined that he'll complete his training, he'll never get into space. I can be determined I'm going to put my foot on the moon all I want to, but I've got to be determined that I'll complete my training long before I ever will be able to be determined that I will complete my mission. And where are we at today? Are we at the place where we're in training or are we at the place where we're in the mission? We don't know. That's God's business, not ours. If we're people of faith, we trust Him. We believe Him. We know that he is protecting our best interests. And therefore, we don't go in with great anxiety, but we just say, okay, Lord, this, if this is training for a greater mission, then I am determined that I'll complete my training. If this is the mission that you've given me, then if it takes 40 years, I'm going to continue to do what you've called me to do till I complete my responsibility and my calling. Praise God, amen. Getting the oppressor to release the people of God from the bondage of slavery would prove not to have been Moses' finest hour at all. A lot of people think when Moses got the Pharaoh to release God's people that that was his greatest hour. No. Getting them released from Egypt was a picnic <laughs> compared to getting them to the land of Canaan. Getting them released was a picnic. Getting a bunch of stubborn, unbelieving heathen people through the wilderness to the land of promise. Now that was an accomplishment. Canaan, the destination toward which they ventured as they filed by the hundreds of thousands out of the land of their oppressor toward the land of promise given unto Abraham by their one true God. Sometimes we become so frustrated by our failures day to day to accomplish the goals that we have set, to realize the dreams that we have dared to dream. Sometimes we feel the great temptation to stop running the race because day after day and year after year we fail to see the finish line upon the breaking horizon. But cheer up children, Canaan land is just in sight. According to the word of God in 2 Corinthians 1 and verse 20, for all the promises of God in him, in Jesus Christ, are yea and in him, amen, unto the glory of God by us. God doesn't promise anything that he will not deliver on. Hallelujah. And what are those promises today? Let me tell you but a few. John 10, 10. Jesus said, the thief cometh not, but for to steal, and to kill, and to destroy. I am come that they might have life, and that they might have it more abundantly. Hallelujah. Psalm 37 and 4 promises us, this delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. Mark 10. Verses 29 through 31, and Jesus answered and said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, there is no man that hath left house, or brethren, 
their sisters or father or mother or wife or children or land for my sake and the gospels that he shall receive an hundredfold now in this time he didn't say all your reward will be in heaven he said if you make sacrifices for me and for the cause of the gospel i will reward you in this time a hundredfold And not just a hundredfold now in this time, houses and brethren and sisters and mothers and children and land with persecution. So you've got to be one determined individual regardless how you do it. Because the Lord said, I'll reward you a hundred times, but you know what? It's not going to be easy. The whole way there's going to be people fighting you tooth and toenail. Jim and Tammy Baker struggled to build the ministry over there on the East Coast in the Carolinas, that they felt would be a blessing to Christian people. But don't you know that half the Christian world fought them the entire way? You think today, because of who you are, that the Christian community is fighting you, and that you think that they're going to stand against you because you're gay or lesbian, or because of who you are. I've got news for you. Them and Tammy were gay or lesbians, but still half the Christian world stood against them. Children, if they don't oppose you for one thing, they'll oppose you for something else. They're going to find fault no matter what you're doing, or how you're doing it, or what's your motivation, or what's your reason. <clears throat> but the Lord said, no, I'll bless you. He said, oh, you'll receive a hundredfold now in this time. Houses and brethren and sisters and mothers and children and land with persecutions. But then he adds, and in the world to come, eternal life. But many that are first shall be last, and the last first. Our God has not called us out of the bad place, promising us the bitter place, like he did the people of Israel, only to leave us in the middle place. Somewhere between where we have been and where he desires to lead us. That's not where he's going to leave us. We may not realize our goals tomorrow. We may not see our dreams coming into fruition within this year. We may not even begin to see all that God has promised for our life before this decade is over. But we certainly shall never see the land of promise if we cease our journey now. If we cease to run this way, if we stop where we are and allow complacency and melancholy to seize our souls and dampen our spirits, we'll never get where we're going. Proverbs 29, 18, where there is no vision, the people perish. If you could always see the finish line further ahead of you, you would die like Moses. Because without a vision, the people perish. As long as Moses was leading the people of God toward a place that he could only see in the eye of his spirit and in the eye of his mind, he lived. But as soon as he saw it in reality, he died. When there is no vision, the people perish. I'm going to tell you, even once you get to your destination, God then has to give you plane tickets for a new destination. Because he doesn't want you to stand still. He doesn't want you to stay in the same place. He wants us to ever consistently be growing and maturing into something better and greater. Acts 2.17, and it shall come to pass. In the last days, saith God, I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Without a vision, the people perish, even when we do not see the borders of that land of promise before us, toward which we have begun to march. We must yet march on. For the only man or woman who shall ever realize their goals 
who will ever see their dreams become reality, who shall ever stand today on the soil which in years past was nothing more than a promise, are those who will remain determined to reach the end toward which they have set out. The Word of God tells us in 1 John 5, verses 1 through 5, Whosoever believeth that Jesus is the Christ is born of God, and every one that loveth him that begat loveth him also that is begotten of him. For this we know, that we love the children of God when we love God and keep his commandments. For this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not grievous. First John, John is writing, and John says, you know what? You know you're on the right track. You know you're on the right path. You know you're doing the right thing when you love the people of God, and you love God, and you strive to keep his commandments and his commandments do not strike you as being heavy and burdensome and troublesome and grievous. Did you hear me? If you grow up in a church where the commandments of God seem to be a grievous thing, it was so hard and so difficult to live up to the letter of the law and to do everything that they told you and taught you to do, and it was so hard and oh my God, shall be with them. 
and be their God. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow, nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I, singular, make all things new. And he said unto me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. And he said unto me, It is done. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is the thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely. He that overcometh shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. That's our long-term goal today, amen? That's the long-term vision that God has given us. That's what we believe one day we're going to inherit as the people and children of God. But in the process of our long-term goals, we also have short-term goals in this life. The old songwriter penned the words, I am determined to hold up to the end. Jesus is with me, on him I can depend. And I know I have salvation, for I feel it in my soul. I am determined to hold up to the end. I want you to know today I'm not merely holding out for heaven. I am not only holding out for a better life and a better quality of life right here on planet Earth. I'm holding out today for the promise of a revival in the midst of a people who for centuries have been made to believe that they have no place in the kingdom and fellowship of God. And the Christ is the Messiah. The ends toward which we are holding out today are not all to be realized after the new Jerusalem has nestled into its earthly position and the lion and the lamb are frolicking, are frolicking upon the nest of an ass with a child playing close nearby. No, that's not when all my vision is going to be realized. It's going to be realized long before then. The ends for which we hold out today are not all that done by the same cord which binds our hopes to sit as kings and priests with Christ Jesus, our supreme sovereign, creator, and redeemer. No, many of the ends for which we hold out today are goals we have purpose to achieve in this lifetime. They are dreams we have dreamed of a better life in this earthen world of flesh and blood. They are desires which have been placed within our hearts by our divine creator, who has placed them there for no other reason than to give us a purpose to live, a reason to strive, a goal to achieve, and an end to work for. So that when we have closed our eyes to this world of sin and opened our eyes in God's shiny city of gold, we will have left behind us not a scarce few mourners who weep as the world weeps over one of their own fallen, but rather we as the people of God will leave behind a shouting multitude who shall rejoice over our triumph and the realization of our vision. For in realizing that which was in our hearts, we will have become to those we leave behind the heroes and the heroines that compare with such great men and women as George Washington, Thomas Jefferson, Benjamin Franklin, Betsy Ross, Abraham Lincoln, Thomas Edison, Henry Ford, Nobel, Shakespeare, Mozart, Beethoven, Bach, Churchill. Franklin Delano Roosevelt, Martin Luther King Jr., John F. Kennedy, Margaret Thatcher, Mahatma Gandhi, and even the greatest leader, prophet, priest, and example ever to serve the nation of Israel and revered to this day as the greatest prophet the Jewish nation has ever known, Moses himself. Notice today how that as I spoke each of those names you immediately recalled 
not only who these individuals were, but also what field they were in and what they were most known for. It's almost an automatic thing. You hear the name Thomas Jefferson, and you immediately think the light bulb. You immediately think the phonograph. You, you know, immediately your mind begins to remember its accomplishments. Your life can also be synonymous with your vision and your dream. When your name is spoken in memorial, long after you've passed on to your reward in the life to come, your accomplishment and field of labor can be immediately recalled as well. If you and I will set our minds today to live as one determined individual. Amen. Well, tomorrow, I don't know how you do it. I've had people tell me that. I don't know how you do it. I don't know how you keep going when everything looks like the devil just tore you up, chewed you up, spit you out. I don't know how you do it. I don't quit. I get discouraged. I get despondent. I get fed up. I get tired. I don't know how you do it. It's easy. I'm one determined individual. It took Ronnie Reagan a lot of times to get into the White House. But once he did, he made a name for himself that will live on for the ages. It took Moses a long time to become what God would have him to become, the leader of God's people, the greatest prophet the nation of Israel would ever know, the lawgiver. But once he did, he created for himself a name that will never be forgotten. He created for himself a reputation that will forever be revered. Children, I want you to know today, I'm one determined individual. Are you determined today you're going to reach the goal? Are you determined today you're going to get where you're going? Amen. Because if you are one determined individual, God is faithful. The promises of God are yea and amen in Christ Jesus. You'll get where you're going. You'll achieve your ends. You'll reach your goal. You'll realize your vision. You'll see your dream become fruition. You'll see your dream become a reality. Amen? Amen. Would you stand with me today? Amen. I've got an interesting message for last night. I think that, uh, for tonight, I should say, I, uh, I think that one there was pretty good, don't you? Amen. And people always ask me, and God said, tell them why. Let them know why you are the way you are. Let them know why you keep struggling and fighting, even if it takes 40 years. I'll be 42. Can I say that out loud? <laughs> but no matter how long it takes, brother, I've seen great victories in times past, but there are greater victories ahead. And Charles Reagan has been quoted many, 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 many times this week as saying, that the best for America is just a hand. And for we as the people of God, the same is true. You've seen great days behind you, but they're behind you. Better days are just a hand. If you will be determined and follow through and keep running and striving till you reach your goal. Amen. Master, we love you today. We thank you, God, for this wonderful word of encouragement that you laid upon our hearts. We pray, God, that your spirit would cause this word to go with us as we go to our homes this afternoon. Lord, help us to meditate upon it. Help us to make our minds up, Lord, that we will be, each of us, one determined individual, just like Reagan, just like Moses, just like so many great leaders in our time. Lord, those who had such great obstacles against us, Beethoven, who became one of the greatest composers of all time, although he was so appearing. Master, we ask today, God, that you would just help us, Lord, to be encouraged in our hearts, to believe you, to trust you, to keep following you till we realize our dream, until we see our vision come into fruition. Oh, God, today, help us to be, each of us, one determined.